Good day and welcome to another Battlestub Sports Store product installation how-to video. Uh, my name is Ryan and this is Randy. Um, what we're going to be doing today is taking the license plate that we make on the uh, Battle Store and we're going to apply it to the Yamaha Rhino here. Uh, before we do that, how do we, let's go into a little bit about how we get to this number. This is actually the registration number on the machine. That's correct. It's the uh, registration from a pilot program, which will come due here at the end of June 2012. will automatically convert to a UTV sticker, but it's the same number. It doesn't change. This number stays with the machine, whether it's an ATV or UTV, forever, as long as it's registered in Wisconsin. So we know from looking at the side decal what the numbers are, the four numbers followed by two letters. Okay. So that often gets confusing. You never have to change it. It does not change every two years. It stays forever. Right. So one-time plate, if you don't write the plate, you shouldn't have to replace it ever again. And we're, we're talking about Wisconsin here. because That's correct. Nationwide channel. Um, but we also have the ability to make them for Minnesota, which takes the digits away, puts it down so you can put your stickers on top. You just indicate that in the order notes. Right. Just so you know, people are asking why we didn't do that in Wisconsin and our law enforcement officials often check the year of registration based on the color. So the color code year is, is easy to see and they often set on the side of the trail. So again, as a compromise with our law enforcement officials, they said we really like the idea of checking year sticker from the side where if it's a rear, they gotta be following. And at one time we talked about doing a front plate, we compromised on that and said, look, we'll do the sides, decals, rear plate number, these is, these are for law enforcement, it's for our trail patrol ambassadors, and it's for everyday folks that want to report somebody doing something wrong. So you yeah. can see it. All. Okay. Now the problem we have with plates like these are the plate itself, it's hard to mount it to a UTV and some ATVs as well. So what we're going to do in this instance is we're going to take a uh, rivet gun and we're simply going to pop some holes in it and rivet it right to the machine. Yeah, Wisconsin law says it just has to be visible from the rear. That's as uh, generic as it can be. So, like I said, we're going to drill. Uh, I think what we're going to do here, we looked at a couple different ways, and to get the most service, I'm going to go this way. So, we'll drill a couple holes, hit the rivets in, and we'll be back with you. Okay. making some of the pilot holes here. Make sure before you drill into your machine that there's no sensitive wiring or things that could get damaged. I'm going to do, so I'm just going to uh, hold it in while I drill the other hole. And we'll eye it up for level. Down a little, down a little, right there. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's closer. Okay. Now what you're also going to find is some of our manufacturers are working out a, uh, a neat mounting bracket system. So you'll be able to mount these um, with some neat brackets, both drill and just hanging styles. Yeah, and a lot of states already have them. Uh, the Dakotas, Minnesota, I think Utah heads, or uh, Idaho, some of the states where you ride in Arizona. You can get them, so it's not like this is a brand new idea. In fact, how many cars are on the road with a rear plate? They're right. there for a reason. Yeah, I want to get, uh, let's get another rivet out here and just hold it so it's in the right place. It should be able to twist, but. Number one. And number two. So for the little bit of stress that uh, this machine would encounter, this wouldn't be uh, a place on the machine where it would take a lot of abuse. 
um, you know, pop rivets are simply pop rivets and the plastic and the, the aluminum metal can only take so much stress. So if you're putting it on the rear or the bottom and it's constantly getting wanged and hit, um, you know, this kind of strategy may not be the best way. Bolts and such would have to be done for that. But And we're wanting to test this out. Uh, again, we've been testing them on ATVs for four years. Usually zip ties work well there. Again, uh, I think it's Can-Am and some of the other manufacturers already make the, the bracket holder, so it's less of an issue. All right.